Mr Murphy, are Borussia Dortmund going to win it? Is their name on it? Well, I think in cup competitions, you kind of get that feeling sometimes that your name's on it. But whoever they play in the final is going to be a hell of a challenge for them. But in a one-off game at Wembley, I mean, why not? They've got super talent. They've got pace. They've got experience. You only need to look to go your way for 90 minutes. Of course they can win it. And I tell you, God knows how many fans they're going to bring over. Because I've played there a couple of times, Dortmund. And I remember the amazing fans. And they'll travel in. God, they'll they'll bring their full allocation, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a phenomenal, a phenomenal achievement for them getting there, Simon. I'll tell you what I've got to say. Sorry, just one thing on it. When you look at Sancho's performances over the two games, you know when you see a player who's coached in part of a team that's got an organisation and a real yeah. um, style and a game plan? Took in when you haven't got the ball, double up when the wide men, when the fullbacks are getting, I've got 1v1s with the wide men. Positional play was great. His work ethic was great. Well, that comes from the manager. It yeah. comes from the manager. Yeah, it's it's so obvious watching a team that's well coached compared to watching a team that isn't, which I did on Monday night. Yeah, Eden Terzic is uh, is is superb. He's really got a hold of Borussia Dortmund. Let's talk Jaden Sancho, Simon, if we can. I mean, considering the direction he and Ten Hag have taken since <laughs> since their spat, yep. can he feel justified in his actions now? He he didn't apologise for whatever happened. Uh, at Manchester United and he's out of there is this a situation when the player has come out on top not really I mean I don't think you cover yourself in glory if you're ostracised from a club mm. because you've been criticised by the manager and then you go back and you feel that you're bigger than the, the dynamics of the authority inside the club he's gone back to Dortmund he left Dortmund because Dortmund wasn't a big enough club for him to want to be at he's gone back to Dortmund and at this moment in time Dortmund have got something that looks meaningful because they've got to a Champions League final. This doesn't validate, vindicate or redeem this player because he's playing a few decent games, 14 games this season. What would vindicate him was if he'd have he handled himself better. This is a player that has a consistent form of indiscipline throughout his career and challenges. And maybe they indulge him at Dortmund. Maybe they allow him to do precisely what he wants. And maybe that's great. And maybe people think that's something to be admired. I don't think that Jaden Sancho performed for two years at Manchester United at a particularly high level. And I don't think his reaction, whether it's ideal for a manager to verbalise his dissatisfaction through one player in the media, is debatable. Maybe he exhausted every possibility. This is a player, by the way, that the manager had invested enough time into that he wanted to send him over to Holland to help him with apparent psychological challenges that he was having. So there clearly was an investment and a relationship there. And his repayment for that was that the player behaved in a certain way, which might explain some of the culture and lack of substance of Man United if that was allowed to be entertained. So this is like the argument, well, he's a good player. Let him get away with it. Oh, he's a good player. It doesn't matter what he does off the field because in the end, that kind of culture will bring you into a place where you have no substance. So, no, I don't think Jadon Sancho has been redeemed. I think he's a decent player. I think he was always overhyped, always overinflated. We, we learned things about him at Man United that he doesn't have the pace to go in behind in certain respects that United were asking him to do. And for Dortmund, he obviously feels comfortable there. He obviously feels like a big fish in a small pond. So you take that big fish and you put him into a big pond and he becomes what Jadon Sancho became at Man United. It makes me all the more curious to think what actually happened for him to go the distance that he went with his non-apology. I mean, he just refused to buckle Sancho for whatever reason. A lot of what Simon has just said I agree with. Um, but to me, the player is having the last laugh here, whatever which way you look at it. Well, I, I, I think he's enjoying his football again, which is good for him. It should give him the confidence and the platform to then go on and put that United episode to bed. Yeah. But I think Ten Hag was dealing with so many issues at Man United. He probably did have enough of Chancho. And I always think, looking back on my career, when I fell out with a couple of managers, um, I always think the manager's right, generally, and, and you have to toe the, la toe the line. I look back on some of my behaviours and comments and... and self-indulgent behaviour and think that wasn't the way to do it. And do you, you regret that now when you when you think of how you behaved? Um, <coughs> well, mostly, yeah. One in particular I don't because he didn't have the courage to speak honestly to my face and was talking to other people and I confronted him on it. But that that's, it's done, it's gone. I, I, I think I, like a lot of players through the career, can look back and think what a petulant, self-indulgent footballer with a big ego I was. There. So what happens when Dortmund get beat in the final? 
Well, he's still he's still had a good return, and he's still got. Well, the conf- team's had a good return, and he's had a few good performances in it. Yeah, and so, so that gives him a platform. If, if we're saying that he's redeemed himself by the very nature, most sensible thinkers will look at this and go, "Well, you didn't play very well for Manchester United for a significant period of time, and you have been called out for indiscipline." Uh, on England duties, turning up with punctuality a challenge for Dortmund, which seemed to have endured it a few times, and at Man United. And your way of respecting authority was not to accept your place in the food chain, was to stand outside like an outlier, saying, I'm going to tell the sea to go back. I'm Jaden Sancho. I'm bigger than Ten Hag. I'm bigger than Man United. I don't like what's been said of me, so I'm going to behave this way. I actually think it's preposterous. Well, I, I, I agree. And I, think, and I don't think he's got any redemption because he had a few good performances. I, Swallows and Summers. Mm, I, I think the only negative here, really, he'll probably be sitting there thinking that he's done the right thing because now he is where he is and getting the praise he is and playing again. So he's probably thinking... I'm. He's in England team. Well, no, let me finish. So he's justified. He's no, probably he's thinking he's justified. But he's not really because the reality is that Simon's right, that actually prospective buyers and people will look at the way he conducted himself at Manchester United. Yes, yeah. The the reality is he never had a chance at Man U looking at it now. He never really had a chance. What because do you mean? the place is in disarray. There's no structure to the team. Cobblers. There's no there's no structure to the team. There's no work ethic. There's no leadership. It I was mean, da- it was down to him to shine if he could. Uh, well, why, t- did, why didn't he shine? Very, and pay very. Back the, what was it? Seventy five million at the bid for him. Very few players, Jim, succeed on their own. You succeed by being with a good manager who leads you well, and you have a good group of players with core values. That I look at back of all the great teams, and you can say, yeah, he was a great player, and he contributed, and he contributed, but they were all led by great managers. And that's Sam, fa- you're, you're talking about contribution and, and, that's a and fair core comment, values. But you don't abdicate the players from responsibility. I'm not. I'm you just giving reasons. As and to the fact right. that he's gone back to Dortmund should be quite telling. Where was the big queue of people that wanted his services other than people that had tolerated him before, that were sitting there rubbing their hands on a 75 million quid? Or, or you could change the word tolerate to it, or or the people who knew how to get the best out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Prostitute themselves to allow a player to be, be to be given a pl- special platform because they don't understand the fundamentals of the respect culture. And the fact that he's not an England team. How's he redeemed himself? Is he in the England squad? Is he being mentioned to play for Well, England? he's got a better chance no. now. Yeah. He's got a better chance now of getting a decent move than he would have if he'd stayed at United. I'll put, I'll put it out there, actually, Danny. That's, that's I mean, the I, judging by what Sean Deitch to my right, sorry, chance, Simon is saying, uh, this morning... <laughs> Um, a lot of people are agreeing the daddy. with what, what what Simon is saying, actually. I mean, if he's like this with Dortmund, why wasn't he like that with United? Well, I just gave some and, answers. And, and he, said, he said at the time that he couldn't wait to pull on the red jersey of Manchester United. It was his dream move. Well, what I'd so, ask you is, do you think Jadon Sancho would have struggled as much and been as much of a failure if he'd gone Man City or gone to Liverpool or Arsenal? The answer is no. Mm. It, the, the simple answer is no, he wouldn't. He might not have been a huge yeah, success. That explains his fault. It doesn't explain his attitude. No, and, and his I agree disposition with you. And his outlook. I keep waiting for the punchline with Tommy Cooper. It sounds <laughs> more like Tommy Cooper. Let's put it out there. I mean, has he justified <laughs> his Fester. actions at Old Trafford this morning by going back to Dortmund and getting himself with his colleagues to a Champions League final? Is it redemption to some degree for Jaden Sancho? Uh, let me know. As a United fan, I somewhat um, peeved that he's doing for Dortmund what you'd like to have seen him do for your club at Manchester United. United. Lloyd's a big Manchester United fan. Good morning to you. What do you want to say on Sancho, mate? Good morning, all. Good morning, Lloyd. Uh, he doesn't deserve to play for Man United, in all honesty. Um, Man United's got its own troubles right now. Um, they're a mess from the top of the club to the bottom of the club. But his attitude at United and the way he's called out for potentially not doing what he should as a professional athlete, he should have just done what every athlete does bite the bullet apologise work hard carry on playing so what he's done at Borussia Dortmund doesn't surprise me at all because he comes across as though he's a bit of a petulant kid and Simon that, that basically has been your line in this yeah I mean I think no one knows the full intricacy of what's going on behind the scenes but the fact that he wouldn't climb down the fact that he has operated in a vacuum the fact that he has history and form on this Leads you to a conclusion, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, Lloyd, you, you, you feel emphatically that Manchester United fans should wash their hands of this altogether. That that Sancho w- was something, that a, a, an, an unnecessary episode that they, they f- should look back on with absolutely no delight whatsoever. It's all down to him and it didn't work. And it's down to him. 
Is Lloyd still with us? Lloyd isn't. Maybe Lloyd's, yeah. Lloyd's voice has gone like Simon's. Luke, good morning. A big United fan. What's your take on uh, Sancho doing it for, for Dortmund but never did it for United? It's going well. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Luke. Are you under the bonnet of your car? Are you ready to join us? I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, what's your, what's your take on Sancho? All right. To be fair to the lad, obviously, he's, he's doing his thing. He's playing well at um, Dortmund, but it went, it went right at him for him at United. But I just wanted to say to Danny, he's contradicting himself because he no one knows what's gone on with the situation between him and Tanag. So if he went to Liverpool or City, it wouldn't make a difference because he's, it's his attitude, obviously. It's something big or picture going on and it wouldn't make a difference whether he was at Liverpool or City. It don't make a sense, don't make sense at all. Well, I, I, I think it does because when you work under a different manager who has a different set of rules and a different way of communicating and man managing you, you get that's how you get some players to thrive and some don't. That's why they become well, the best. If it's a discipline issue, how would Pep discipline him? How would Klopp discipline him? And any different to Tanag? If he's got to apologise, he's got to apologise, and that's the end of it. Well, so because you're because you, your respect for the guy you work with is very different depending on how you deliver discipline. Also, there's a group of players at Manchester City and Liverpool who are more there's more leaders there, there's more experience. Whereas it seems like at United there doesn't seem to be any cohesion amongst you know the other players should be guiding him in or you before he even gets to a point where you're falling out of the manager. Look, I, you. I understand what you're saying. There's no guarantee if he was at a bigger club, his discipline would still be... Bigger club? <laughs> bigger club? Well, sorry, more more successful <laughs> at the moment. But yeah, there's there's no guarantee his behaviour would be better. But I think there's a hell of a good chance. That's why the best managers in the world well, get the best out of the player. As well, he was already at City and they let him go. So it couldn't have been that great between him. Well, they let Cole Palmer go, didn't they? There's always reasons why they let young players go because they can't put them all in the team. Look, I mean, does it somewhat annoy you? That he's doing for Dortmund, clearly, what he should have done for United. No, not really, because we all knew he was a good player, but he came in, when he first came in, he was overweight, and I sent him to, to Ajax to go and train and lose some weight. So it's, it's not all been gravy for him. It's not all been good. He's come in, he's overweight, he's not playing well. He's took him out of the team, he's brought him back in the team. He scored a couple of goals, scored against Liverpool. Ayo, but it's not, it's not good enough, and he's not played well enough, so he's, he's, he's had his chance, he's lost it. He has lost it, you're yes, right, but he, he might win it with uh, Dortmund. Thanks, Luke. Chris, big United fan. Uh, we're coming up to half ten, but why not? Have a crack. What do you want to say about Sancho? Uh, just firstly, massive pleasure to ring in. I listen to you guys all the time. Um, you keep me going through but my drives around the northwest. <laughs> Good, um, man. Good. Uh, two points. You said that United aren't the winners in this. I feel that we, we could be because... November, December time, we'd have been lucky to get 20 million for Jaden Sancho. Mm. With all the media hype that's going on around him now, we've probably just bumped out to maybe 40, 50 million. You, you know what I mean? So we, we could win on a on a transfer fee in that sense because, let's face it, the, the status of what was happening at, for him at United. Yeah. It wasn't working for United. We, yeah. we had a player that wasn't playing. Um, and then secondly, I do actually think it, it is a bit of media hype. I think he's joined a Dortmund team who are in much better position than where United are currently. We've, we've just got to accept that United are in a bad situation at the moment. They but, are. Just on that, Chris, as you're driving around, as we head to 10.30, um, uh, going towards Ten Hag, are, are you comfortable enough that he goes into next season with you? Uh, I don't know, but I don't know who replaces him. That's my thing. Like, if there was a massive standout, you know, contender, then maybe you'd think, yeah, get rid of Ten Hag. But he has had massive injury worries, you know, problems that you know we've not had a back four. And he's made bad signings as well, and he makes bad decisions sometimes during games that you think are wrong. So I don't know. But we've sacked so many managers. I think you know. At what point do you just say let's stick with someone? Arsenal could have sacked Arteta, yeah. didn't they? Okay. T two Listen, years into his tenure. Chris, thank you very much, mate. Good points in that. Um, quite a lot of people, Simon, strangely, coming to Sancho's defence this I see morning. That, yeah, I see that. Um, how is Sancho the problem? He's in a Champions League final. Uh, Sancho was never the problem, says that. Co says that caller. I mean, obviously, Sancho's looking at it from his point of view. I've done the right thing. I'm back at the club I want to play for, and that club has got to a Champions League final. Who's going to join them there? That's a question we'll look at further down the line. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.